I believe that particular one was yet another one of the uh, undescribed Sidipatina forest from the or literature. Something, um, uh, something that Laura had been seen pilot? Uh, in for the it. Pacific China. as well. And one of the remarkable parts was that it moved very fast. Uh, the video that was recorded on the uh, publication from Pacific um, has still images camera. that are streaked because they're moving so oh, quickly. Yeah. The jelly it moved pretty yeah. fast in our video as well. Sure side, if you take a look at the Sirius camera, we've got a jelly. I can one. zoom in on Sirius. Yeah. You can go Talk ahead, Dave. Down. Yeah, it looks like it could be Peralia. Oh, uh, so it's Peralia is a large oh, Medusa oh, yeah, that uh, yeah. we sometimes see in the midwater transect. Okay. Zooming out, Medusa, pilot. It's a, okay. a there we go. true Medusa, similar to the ones you might That's see at the beach. That's full wide on Sirius. Okay. Kind of a dusty red collar. Great. So unlike previous transects, with me stationary, you really can wander anywhere you want. And you're not going to get into trouble. I'll, I'll talk you back if you get, okay. yeah, just get let turned me know. around. Uh, something lower screen pilot uh, coming towards us. Oh. I'm going to push your head a little more. Okay, sounds good. Okay, good information. Okay. Uh, there's something center screen pilot. Yeah, you can zoom Kind of entwarming along. It's on the right hand side now. Prep wash. That's okay. Coming out. That's like a Telecopran siphonophore, uh, which is a, a type of colonial um, hydrozoan that has uh, kind of a rocket shaped um, bell at the top or a pair of bells that are used for one of those. That's a shrimp. Um, and the siphonophores have these uh, pulsing bells at the top that are used for propulsion called um, mectophores. And they, um, in this particular type of siphonophore, are like a little rocket. Uh, and they have a long, thin uh, structure hanging off of that with uh, a number of different kinds of zoids, some for so uh, getting minutes. prey, some for reproduction, uh, um, some for sorry. defense. Well, so, sorry, five minutes. Um, five that minutes was well. the, okay. one of the first helicopter siphonophores we've seen today. Uh, not, not too much. Not too much. Yeah. Okay. Watch leads. Why? Right, what's up? I was just thinking about where the current might be coming. Oh, okay. Yeah, five minutes for this transect. Five minutes left. I'm not mostly trying minutes. to stay like behind things and mm -hmm. you know pirouette a little bit as it drifts back towards Sirius. Uh, oh. Yeah, not too much lateral. Oh. Oh, okay. Uh, center screen pilot. Go ahead. I was hoping it would move again. <laughs> Wait. At the top of the image is the is the, the bell that would pulse oh, the. Hi. Oh, that's the. Uh, <laughs> uh, hanging below it. <laughs> that and, uh, was the jelly coming into me. Others that called the cytosome. That's the siphonophore. I bet we'll see a bunch more siphonophores as we move up the water column. So it looked like that siphonophore only had one swimming bell, is that right? It did look like it maybe only had one, and typically you see them in a pair, like in a prey siphon siphonophore. Um, it's a little hard to tell. Uh, so. Ooh, long one up top. Go ahead. Okay, I coming think in. There's another siphonophore coming into view. This looks like what uh, Dougal would describe as a curtain of death. Okay, going tighter. Okay, coming in. 
Oh boy, look at that. Ah, so this one is a Physonex siphonophore. Uh, this might be a species uh, in the genus Maris, um, the red coloration of the siphosome. So all the red are Maris. groupings of different types of zoids with tentacles and stomachs and uh, reproductive um, morphology. And some of these, when they encounter the light of the ROV, they shed uh, certain parts of their cytosome, as you can see, streaming down screen, below. Yeah. Up, but, okay. um, yeah, those might can, be palpons that have come off there, yeah. small structures um, used for excretion sometimes you can see all, like, uh, and some other functions that we're not 100% clear about. Uh, but this is a Physonex yeah. siphonophore, a little bit different. The big tip-off for Physonex is they usually have much thicker, robust structures, like you're seeing in the big, thick red siphosome here. And they have multiple nectophores, usually groups job, of uh, that looks good. Uh, yeah. maybe pairs. It could be eight, ten pairs. And as they get longer, uh, it could be dozens of them. And they are sort of this curtain of death. They, um, in some, and sometimes with the ROV, we can I sneak up on them. Uh, distracted by that white thing uh, in the and, water column. And they'll, they'll swirl, swim around kind of in a spiral. And as they swim around, they relax all their making the uh, multi-layered curtain of uh, hanging tentacles and tentaculae all studded with stinging yeah, cells that they use to eye. capture the prey well, that uh, okay. have the Jump bad luck bit, to maybe. encounter it. Sure. Stay on it as long as I can. Yeah, pilot, you got about one more minute. Okay. It's a good uh, so subject to leave off. Is yeah. Apart yeah. Into a bunch of cool pieces, ending. Um, Will certain parts of it regrow, or will it? Okay, we'll let it go, Caitlin. Okay, colonies? coming out. Eighty degrees. Okay, pushing forward. Yeah, we're That's not full sure. I mean, most likely they will reproduce uh, those particular structures, uh, and as we know that they are, you know, continuously generating those particular zoids as the animal grows. So it's very likely that they'll grow those back, go to uh, and then so you know, move on the their merry way. Right? Uh, what? You're counting on 10 meter a minute ascent? Yes. Yes, yes. yes. we'll do the I'm oblique sorry. ascent. Yeah. There's yeah. a jelly coming in at the bottom. Okay, we can do a quick yeah. look at that. Oh, there's a nice jelly. It looks like it's swimming upside down. Yep, set at 10 meters. So. Minute. Yeah, this yeah, is so filmed. 30 the, meters a minute. Um, toe, they call this the dinner plate jelly. Is the uh, that's right. Because yeah. it's shaped like a big dinner plate. Oh, that's cool. Uh, and then it can pulse. So whenever you're ready. As you can okay. see below, that After structure shot, kind of pulsing sorry, back yeah, and forth. Right at the top. And it kind of floats through the water column, extending those tentacles um, as far as it can to make itself very large. Uh, like the siphonophore, a lot of the gelatinous animals um, spread out to make themselves very big. So they have a, a bigger clearance area, a bigger area, a bigger net to use to capture prey. Okay, we'll let it go. Um, okay. They have a number I'll of different types of prey that they okay. capture okay. on the out. tentacles, we'll and you'll see they're a bright Ready. light. Okay. Those mean that so there's wide. all sorts of skin cells watch uh, now. inside those okay, tentacles. Um, it, all right, sure said. Great. That's going to merc yeah, that one. Uh, this is always also is a great predator of the halicreatid that we saw with the thorny structures on a spell as well. So sure side, we are ending our 1100 meter transect. We're going to get information for the oblique ascent, and we will uh, rise up to a depth of 900 meters. Um, and and. Uh, Keep the camera steady as we come up through the water column. Uh, copy that. Thank you very much. That was great for contact. Zoom past the brow. There we go, that's perfect. Making ten a minute up. Should I have the focus closer to us? Yeah, so try to get those particles in focus. Um, and 
then we're, we're just going to leave the focus as it is, and you won't have to okay. change it as we come up. Should I bring up the black cell? Sure. So with this section, um, we actually don't try to zoom in on anything. We keep the zoom in the focus th as it is. Okay. And we just, I kind of kind of drive so that the marine snow is kind of coming toward the camera. But the idea is that if we were to see something pass us by, there, you know, things would be in focus enough to get like a screen grab if they wanted it. Okay. And uh, what, uh, uh, what about the serious view? Uh, serious view is the same because I'm, we want to keep it consistent so I can drive by it. Okay. I, that's my only view to know where I'm at relative to Sirius. Gotcha. And just as an update, the currents would be about the same up to 900. So okay. Yeah. Great. It's probably different now. That the foam, foam pack is broken in, us, but this is Megan last Metzger, time we did this, like the natural buoyancy of D2 is the perfect the rate to, meet to match the 10 meter ascent. Exploring the Atlantic Canyon, I just turned the United States, yeah. Canada. Today birds, yeah. is it's dive 10 of our expedition, and we are exploring the so midwater. Just let it float. And we're exploring uh, the connection between yeah, for the most different part. places within yeah. the water column at different depths and learning a lot about the animals that live here. So we're currently located uh, about seven kilometers north of Bear Seamount. We did do a dive on Bear Seamount two days ago, and now we're just located just a bit north of that, uh, doing these transects. Currently, we are between transects uh, going up to 900 meters and then we will start our uh, fourth transect for the day. Now this dive is taking place within the Northeast Canyons and Seamounts Marine National Monument, which consists of three canyons and four seamounts. And this place is a really special place uh, because it is uh, closed to all commercial activity and um, we c it's a great place to do science, and just like we're doing today. Oh, what's that? Some fun facts about the features within the monument. Uh, this monument is located 130 miles off the coast of Cape Cod, Massachusetts, and is approximately the size of Connecticut, which is 4,913 square meters. The seamounts within the unit are Bear Seamount, uh, Visalia Seamount, um, Retriever Seamount, which we died on yesterday, and I forgot the last one. <laughs> Looks like the rest of our transects are all about 24 minutes apiece. Okay. So, so 900 for 24 minutes, and then are we doing 700, 500? Yeah, 900, 700, 500, <coughs> and 300. Okay. We'll probably, well, I guess next shift we'll get the last two. Or whenever. <laughs> I can't. I'm here until they come in. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. And these times do include some setup time. So. Okay. Yeah. Which, uh, yeah, seems well, like uh, up until like seven hundred meters. 
it's all pretty consistent with the current, which is nice. Oh, yes, yes. So hopefully we'll get a few extra minutes in. Yeah, and, until we get over seven, or less than uh, 700. Well, at 700, you're going to get a little bit of a north. Just a little bit of a north uh, flow. Where right now it's mostly, right now it's mostly east. Yeah. So that makes sense. Yeah. Just a very slight southern, southerly. Drifting back just a smidge. Pushing ahead. That's good. Means we're looking into the current. Almost there, and which is stopped. We're going up to 900. Oh, we're yes, not 900. There. Yeah, 900. My apologies. No problem. Keep me on my toes here.
Those look pretty good. We had a fault on a. Looks like it squeezed out. We had a fault on the main earlier this. this oh morning. really? Yeah. Levi thinks it was the deck cable connector. Uh, yes. Yeah, because they had it opened up last night. Yeah. They did find the bad motor cable. Yeah. Though. Uh oh. What's wrong? I'm just noticing a little something about the GUI graphics here. Yeah. Yes. It's a niggling point, but you probably appreciate it. It's it's based on the old geocentric model. Geocentric model. Yes, with the sun revolving around the Earth. Yeah. Oh. If you notice, the the rendering has the the lighting direction mm -hmm. coming from here. So as you rotate it, the lighting direction goes around. It oh doesn't yeah. Doesn't stay constant. I see. Which, of course, is foolish to even expect that, but, <laughs> <laughs> you know, somebody who is used to game consoles would say, oh, this is junk. <laughs> but the fact that the picture actually goes around is pretty cool. Yeah. I'll have to bring that up with Andy because he needs, needs some stuff to keep him busy. <laughs> Actually, I think that was uh, Fernando's baby. Ah. Still way cold down there. Yeah, talk to Carl and Todd about what we can do about that. Put the old rusty regulator back on it. <laughs> I shipped it back to uh, the sun. Uh, I'm not, well, actually, I swapped it though. Yeah. I put on a different spare, and the behavior's the same. Yeah. I, I kind of suspect that maybe, because um, it wasn't doing that last cruise from what I can remember. Like the pressure would still jump to 1100 when we, at the lowest RPM. I'm wondering if there's like, a little blockage in the pressure uh, reducing valve in the in the valve packs or hmm. something because I know that would crack 
Um, and if there's like a little piece of debris in there or something, it might not be letting much flow back to reservoir at low RPMs or something. We tried um, enabling hydraulics on the craft, uh -huh. and then indexing out yeah. just to open up that big volume yes. that expects a lot of flow, yeah. and then turn on, and then enable the HPU, but still yeah. didn't work. Yeah, it's a kind of question of timing and yeah. so forth. And in a properly designed hydraulic system, you should be able to open a whole bunch of stuff up and still not um, fall under your... Uh, pressure regulation so yeah so. okay passing 930 on d2 another minute <laughs> that's a cool fish going by oh, that is very cool we'll make an exception to the rule <laughs> try to track it for a little bit yeah we've got a squid or oh, the squid oops <laughs> hopefully we'll see another one in 30 meters I do believe that squids are on our short list of animals that we'd like to collect today, Pilot. Oh, there's Sounds just good a watch lead. collection. Well, you could go back and get it. So I think that squid was a carangid squid, if I'm not mistaken. They're pretty uh, common in the water column. So hopefully we will see another one. We are currently passing 925 meters depth, approaching our new transect depth of 900 meters. Dan, that was on the collect list. Yeah. <laughs> if, if, I mean, you can go chase after it. We're not going anywhere. I don't know if you could find it now, but uh, it's behind you. Yeah, I think. Uh, You're going to let it go. Let it go. We'll, s we'll see another one, hopefully. Find <laughs> another one. Find me an octopus. So one of the tools our scientists are using today is a program called C-Tube, which allows them to make notes about and identifications of the animals that we're seeing during the video. Right. And one of the really interesting things for both about of us. this tool is that after the dive is over, Scientists can go back and review that video and add additional observations and also annotate um, better identifications idea. based on their area of expertise. And so set this allows a number of different scientists yeah, from all over the world up. to yeah, input yeah, their pretty, expertise just gonna on the animals right that we're it. seeing yeah. today, creating a database there was just, there was a little of buffer built in everything the time observed. Which can be a really helpful this to scientists okay. who are trying to study uh, the diversity and density of animals that we're looking at in the water column and also on yeah, the seafloor. I found out that they had added an extra transect lower down, so that's why it's a little bit different timings. I, I don't see. wasn't sure if you were aware of the previous ones or not. So I'm getting blown off to starboard, Dave, so maybe we should come over another 10 degrees, to like a 280. Yeah, easily. Coming left. Yeah, at this you should still have mostly just uh, east. Okay. Right. D2 is at 900 meters. I'm going to push forward. Okay, winch is stopped. Delta 16. Nice. All right, getting my lights back on. And tilting my camera down. And let's go full wide on D2. 
that we are full wide. Okay. I'm level. Changing focus to far. Okay. All right, shore side, we are set up at 900 meters depth. Um, we're in configuration and ready to proceed, so we're going to call this the start of our 900 meter transect. There's a red. 1658. Okay. Red. Uh, Go ahead, Caitlin. Okay. It's drifting toward me pretty quick. That is a bright this red. This is huh? a really beautiful display of a Cydipentina four, uh, very much like the one that we collected earlier in the dive. Can I come in more? Yeah. You can okay, see the long, two long trailing uh, tentacles. Those are their feeding tentacles. I'm gonna tilt down a little bit, Dave. As I so that back. was part of the same organism that we collected. Yeah, I think uh, with the first one. A little higher current here. Yes. Fine. So. Um, All right. The little packages you see no on. You the feeding tentacles are how it's getting really close to you, pilot. Break. Okay, we'll let it go. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's inside the vehicle now. Look at the manip cams. Okay, push it ahead. Come full wide. Okay, full wide. There's a little higher current than oh, we were good. feeling before. That means more stuff will come your way. Yep. And a lot of these animals, these jellies, uh, aren't very well known to science because they're incredibly difficult to collect and describe. So one of the great things about our operation today is wide? that we actually yes, we have are. a suction sampler aboard the ROV, which we can use to gently um, bring some of these one animal, going, these one animals going back top. to the surface with us. And that will provide a lot of information to taxonomists and uh, scientists that study okay. these animals in, uh, in order to describe them and give them names that we can use to identify them as we see them in the future. Okay. Just pulling focus to see what that is. I think it's just smoke. Uh, schmutz. Schmutz. <laughs> Do you know the Latin name for schmutz? Mm -hmm. I think schmutz is Yiddish. I do not. Schmutzius? I'm sure there's a name. We'll just have to <laughs> I'll, I'll work on that. <laughs> Shot ahead a little more. Okay. Let's go Something. center screen. Okay. On the same same wavelength, pilot. <laughs> oh goodness! There you go. Now I believe this is a living larvation. Uh, within its house. Coming out, pilot. See that swimming motion. Okay, let it go. Okay. Full wide. Safana for uh, blood on your. Extendy. Extendy there. Yeah, latest update shows what you're feeling now. A little bit of an increase. Yeah. Yeah. Or at least in the right direction, though. Yes, it's still mostly east. Very, very slight, maybe southerly. The red thing? Okay. There's also, nope. oh. Let's get on. Well, there's a blue thing up top a little bit. Or, there it is. 
Okay, go ahead. Come again. Er. Some kind of fish. Pretty small. It's very reflective. Oh. Yeah, I think it's a fish. Very small. That's not an oar fish, is it? A little tiny one? A little flat thing? No, I think it's too small for an oar fish. Well, I gotta uh, start somewhere. Okay, it's true. true. Notice how that fish disappeared? Drifted Pushing back forward. It was so You're silvery, fine. but as it turned, the color just blended in. That's part of its camouflage here in the water column. Oh, good. I feel better when about losing it. you don't have a rock to hide behind <laughs> or something to hide in, it's really important to have a good camouflage. So a number of different animals have different um, adaptations that allow them to camouflage themselves within this open ocean area. Uh, one way is to have super shiny silvery bit. sides so that it reflects the, any light back and allows that animal to blend in with its surroundings just like that fish just did. Other animals are red in color. Uh, red is particularly difficult to see in the ocean because that color attenuates first. So being red is the new black helps you hide in the dark. And some fishes have uh, photophores, uh, the which white guy? produce yeah. a light oh yeah, I think it's that, same that fish. allow the fish Maybe. to match its light within the water column. This is a really cool fish. You can actually see it from Sirius. <laughs> yeah. He's bright. Bright and small. So this fish has very silvery sides, which probably allows it to hide pretty well if we didn't bring so many lights down here with us. Nice job, Dan. Thanks. It's not very centered, but... And it's looking straight down in the water column, as long as we're actually yes. oriented right side up. Much like the, uh... Tilt down a bit. ...opposite way of the cutlass eel oh, is just staring trust. directly <laughs> upwards. <laughs> Well, okay, we'll let him go. It's, there's not a lot of light, okay, coming so out. looking in any direction might be hard. Looking down, you might be able to see some That's bioluminescence okay, from other animals uh, that could be good prey oh. items. There you are, right where you're supposed to be. Okay, stretch back out. The high pack tracking is very good today. It showed us superimposed perfectly when you were right under me. Nice. So if all the cameras went dark, you could you could fly with high pack at this point. There's something in the distance on left side of the screen, pilot. It's red. You can see it. Go in. Okay, coming in. Here's another really pretty Cydiphidtinophore. Okay, going a little tighter. It's using that red body coloration to help it hide in the dark. And you'll also notice that a number of animals have uh, red just around their stomach area, and that helps them disguise any food items, prey items that might have bioluminescence okay, from shining go. through okay, their tissue, and attracting attention to themselves. Now let's zoom in high pack a little bit just to see just the vehicles. It's full wide. What? Zoom in high pack to get more of the vehicles in view here. Sure. Excellent.
there's another small fish. Vertical line. I see it. Check it out. Should I zoom in? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, coming in. Just in case it swims away. Wow. Is that a f what is that? like eyes at the top. Yeah, you just get closer. Yeah. Might have a parasite on it too. Now this is really interesting. I it is a fish. That's all I got. It looks like the snipe eels that we were seeing earlier. Oh, nicely done, Dan. It could be a snipe eel uh, with very He's getting shortened. pretty close now, Caitlin. Oh. Uh, come out a little bit. I think you okay. might be right. He's right next to the vehicle. Oh, he is. Go oh, okay. Go midwater geologist <laughs> for the win. <laughs> there he goes. Excellent. Okay, pushing ahead. Okay, I'm full wide. Ooh, big oh. jelly. Oh, no. Ooh, that the problem like with uh, screeching to a halt is I stir up all the water ahead of us, but we can take oh, a Oh, that was look. a nice jelly, um, sort of that oh. dusky red color. <laughs> Could be a Paralia. Oh, there it is. I'll bounce around a little bit. Yeah. Well, it's doing fine. Yeah, that definitely looks like a Paralia type of Medusa. Or jellyfish. Getting well. dizzy. And it's it's pretty um, distinct with its color, and you can see on, on the underside we're looking at. Um, okay, let it go. Okay. Let the, it go. the tentacles that would be coming down. Oh, it's drifting back, just past the starboard vanip cam. Directly below and I believe that was the same jellyfish that we saw in the Sirius view during our previous transect. Oh, there's something small and shiny up in the upper left-hand corner, and it's gone. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, watch lead. As uh, we drift back with uh, the creatures that we zoom in on, we get closer to Sirius, and at some point we got to zoom forward. It's to all really good. get back in configuration. But we'll try to get you another one. There's one coming in the middle screen. But it's fast. Okay, back with you, Caitlin. Okay. How much time do we have left in this transect? Um, you're still looking good. You got 14 minutes. Okay. Yeah, some of these midwater creatures are very, very fast, Go ahead. and that can be got here, got pretty advantageous quick, so. when Go you ahead, live in such an oh, open space. In. Getting uh, away from any predators is uh, swimming. pretty key okay. to survival. Yeah. Oh, goodness. What we've got here is a small arrow worm. Oh, we got another thing in the frame. Okay. Oh. I don't know where he's at, but... And then a copepod. So copepods are very important to the food chain in the ocean. A lot of animals eat them, and they also clean up and eat a lot of uh, detritus in the water and okay. plankton. Let them go. Okay, coming out. Ahead. There's something. Oh, okay, there. Never mind.
Okay, back with you. Okay. Find something we can slurp, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> the trigger fingers get you out here, <laughs> brother. <laughs> one of our onshore experts. I think that's a bristle now. The chat yeah. that, that eel that we were just looking at is actually a sawtooth eel, uh, Cervomer vinii. And it's so named because its teeth are fused into a single band right down the center of the roof of its mouth, which is very unusual and one of the only fish that has that adaptation. What do we have in jar number one, Nav? I'm not sure what's in there. It's like a uh, semi holothurian or something. Yeah. It's a it was. Tina 4. It's a Tina, Tina 4? Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. really bright. It's not big. moving much. Might have <coughs> yeah. shook it up a little bit. It moved a little bit earlier, but it's been oh, sitting okay. in that one spot. Uh -huh. Not much, though. This Might not like the light. Well, yeah. They don't move much anyway. Okay. Can I zoom on center pilot? Go right ahead. There's a little tiny jelly coming into view. Oh. At least I think it was jelly. Which side? Uh, it's uh, on the left side of the screen, lower quadrant. It could just be some uh, mucus. Let's zoom on center there. What, what was it? That thing there. This guy? Yeah, just yeah, it's just mucus. Yeah. Okay. It's hard to tell until you zoom. There's just no way. A lot of these things are so small and are moving so fast. So our dive today, this is dive 10 of our 2019 expedition Deep Connections. And we're exploring the midwater, which means we're looking at different areas of the ocean than we normally do. Normally, we go all the way to the bottom and survey all the animals and things uh, that are down so, there. Uh, uh, something but today top. We're looking there's at big the jelly. That it just went off screen. The surface and the bottom. Oh, there's ocean. one to the left too. And that includes a bunch oh, that one's of jellies, <laughs> which we have quite there's a few in view right left. now. Um, there's one in the middle. Um, there's one on the right. One. Go middle. Okay. So this is another Peralia uh, medusa. It's all the way up. So a type it's of okay. medusa I have more jellyfish. Zoom. Yeah, off Very distinctive color with sort of a peach or dusky red color. Let them drift off. Oh, yeah, let okay. them go. Here, we'll let them go this time. And I think the one that was just off to the right of that Kay. one We're was going to come same. out because yeah. there were a number of them. Yeah. Okay, oh. got to come right here. I don't know where the big guy went. And it's really hard to sample this part of the ocean because a lot of the animals here are very fragile and gelatinous. And in the past and still now, uh, a lot of the ways that we sample these organisms is by doing a trawl with a net. And that captures a lot of the firmer bodied animals, but uh, these jellies can break apart really easily. So we're actually very fortunate to be able to collect some yeah, organisms today using our direction. suction sampler, Straight which will very gently capture these there animals for further study in our lab. I'm just lining up with the ship instead of you and wondering why <laughs> I wasn't getting there. Uh, 
I blew right past it. Okay. Check that up. Some of the things we've been seeing most often are copepods. Those are those small zooming dots all over the screen. We're also seeing euphousids. Those are krill. Most notably, something the in lower left that pilot. Uh, lower, large yeah, whales got it. will eat. We're seeing ketonaths or arrowworms. Doing at 80. And then we're looking at a Salmissus jelly, Sahydra medusa. And I just learned the common name of this jelly. It's known as the dinner plate jelly because it's so Camera's flat. Back it's at like 100 a dinner degrees. plate. Okay. Okay, coming out. Coming past it. Sprinting. Okay, back at forty five. Okay. Ooh. Yep, yep. Oh, I'm there's on a lobate tenophore. It kind of reminds pilot? me of like doing a, a frog okay. kick a little in bit. the water. Still moving pretty fast. Tilting up. Just about. Go. Now I gotta let it go. Okay, coming out. That was a good view Turn pilot. the other way. So a lot of those lobate tenophores are an, a big group of undescribed species. Uh, we keep seeing them in these transects, but uh, we haven't had the chance to really study the different ones. And, uh, and our experts on shore know a lot more about these animals than I do. Yeah, I think that's the the bris 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 bristly guy. Oh, set down, 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 and it's gone. Yeah, the hard thing about the fish is they'll actively avoid the ROV, uh, but these jellies aren't as uh, Sorry. As active at responding to the ROV, so we do have a chance at seeing some of those, which is really important because they are the most understudied group. Yeah, there's more current here and deeper. Center screen. Okay. I think it's too close, pilot. Yep. Sorry. Tilting up. Uh, something coming center now. Distant. The white thing? Uh, 
don't know what it is. Which one? This the one left. close to us? Or? Hit center. No, it's the other one, but. What about this guy up here? Well, let's look at that. Yeah, here's another uh, copepod well, with a copa egg pod. sacs uh, that it's carrying. Down a little bit. Okay. I've been seeing it's a number of those out. today, yeah, and they're away. quite abundant here, uh, which is to be expected. But way smaller than that mega copepod that we saw. What was that, like the third or fourth dive that was like 30 centimeters long or something like that? Yeah, yeah that copepod was parasitic on one of the fish. And guys, I missed the five-minute warning. I apologize. Now, here's a stupid so question. We've got about a minute. No questions are stupid, Kay. Jeff. No problem. Challenge accepted. Uh, especially near, like, the, the abyssal zone, there's fish that have all the parasites and stuff. Why don't they just try to, like, scrape those off on rocks or do that? Well, I don't know the answer to that, uh, but a lot of parasites have adaptations that, um, you know, keep their host from bothering them. Yeah. One minute. So, sort of like a, when you get a tick in the woods, you don't necessarily feel it or notice it until you see it. And uh, oh, zoom fishes can't, center. you know, zoom remove yeah. these parasites easily. Gone. And we'll be going to 700, 700 meters. One of the yep. weirder fish parasites that I know about is uh, this isopod that actually becomes the tongue of a fish. Yeah, those are super gross and weird. And also the, uh, the one that lives in the eye of a uh, Greenland shark. That's pretty weird too. That is really weird. Or one of the yeah, weirdest, be so uh, fast. Mm -hmm. you guys are ready. Uh, parasites okay. that we saw during a dive was this parasite on a shrimp that was coming out from Take the stomach up, of Daniel. this shrimp. Yep. And no one knew what it was, but admittedly, everybody agreed it was a little gross. And what was really great about it was the interaction between all of the scientists on shore uh, you know, networking and sending out images of this parasite in order to figure out what it was. I read a great book called Parasite Rex, which made a pretty Watch compelling now. argument that parasites are the true apex predators. meters per minute, coming up. Camera's yeah, I wanna let you know, we're about to start to tra uh, move up to the 700 transect. Um, I couldn't lights. catch you at the five minute, apologize. Tilting up. Yes, we're in the in process of getting ready to move up. So I that think is I had the end of like our 900-meter transect. That seemed to match. We are about to move well up in the water today. column to 700 meters. And end of transect so at 1726. You guys know you're going to get a little more of a uh, north component to the uh, to the current. Okay. So, yeah. It's about equal. So what you had east, now you're going to pick up some uh, north to it, so more northeast. So you're getting stretched up pretty far forward, Dave. Yep. That's good. What's our desired camera angle? 